Welcome back to Cult Pop. I'm your host, Jim Hall, and today we have a wonderful episode of Cult Pop. Episode three of four episodes shot at the 2013 Motor City Nightmares convention. So it's only fitting that we're going to have Todd and Tommy Brunswick, the founders and hosts of the Motor City Nightmares convention and the wonderful filmmakers that we've had on in the past here on Cult Pop. Uh, we are going to have the Motor City Haunts Club, and our good friend Marcel uh, is going to be on to talk about uh, the different events. And in fact, we've got the uh, Haunted Garage Sale coming up. Uh, they've got a lot of great things to talk about. Uh, Marcel is a really fun guy. He's been on the show two or three times. And the uh, Motor City's Haunt Club is really fun. And if you can get out to some of their events, I think you're, you're really going to uh, enjoy yourself. So uh, watch that segment. And then Don England, one of my favorite local artists, just an amazing horror artist. The guy is fantastic, really nice guy, but his art is, is just great. And what I really like is that he embraces the art in a way that you can get all kinds of cool things, t-shirts and bibs and just every kind of fun thing. And I like when artists do that. You're not just buying prints or drawings, just all kinds of great stuff. So all in all, just a fantastic show today. Uh, as I say, it's three of four episodes shot at Motor City Nightmares. And Jerry and I were very fortunate to be able to uh, have our run of the place for the weekend. So we really ran into some great people. So please enjoy this episode of Cult Pop. With me now are Todd and Tommy Brunswick, the folks that make the this wonderful weekend possible. Guys, thanks so much for taking the time on this very busy weekend to be on Cult sure, Pop. Man, thank you. Uh, you knocked this one out of the park. What an amazing show. Uh, most well-attended convention you've had. People are just absolutely loving it. Getting great response from both the fans out there and the guests. Talk a little bit about some of the guests this, uh, this year and, you know, your thoughts on the convention. Oh, Michael Rooker definitely was the, the biggest draw this year. And... Uh, He's awesome to work with, so it was really great. And then we had a lot of the uh, regulars that come back. And then Doug Bradley came out this year. Awesome. Who doesn't love Pinhead? And then um, Ken Forey, D. Wallace. You guys probably interviewed some of them. Mm -hmm. They were just amazing. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, it was really cool. And I had uh, PJ actually pulled me, PJ Souls pulled me aside earlier today saying that, like, 80% of the people came back, thanked her for coming back they again this year. Coming back, yeah. So they came back here, and it's like Kane yeah. has that draw, you know, so, yeah. does, so does PJ. And it was so Heather great. Langenkamp's first time Michigan here, appearance. Michigan appearance, yeah. her and Amanda Weiss. Awesome. They, yeah, they, they just, time. all these, they just said great things about it. So. We couldn't get Heather on the show, but uh, because of her scheduling and stuff, but uh, we'll, we hope for the future. But Amanda was on, and, and she great. said how she thrilled she so was. Awesome. She doesn't do a lot of these, but she had such a wonderful yeah, experience. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was good. And uh, Michael Rooker, we had him on, and he was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and really cool. He's, he's a awesome. character. Yeah, right? it, it was <laughs> really neat. So we, yeah. we've had, had a wonderful time, but. Uh, I know that, of course, you've got next year's convention, but that's a year off. We'll help you promote that uh, right. next year with you, and we'll talk about that. But uh, let's talk about some things you've got coming up. We've always got the Thursdays that are a lot of fun, but you've got the Halloween uh, event coming up this year, something special. Why don't you talk about that? It's the first time that we decided to do it because everyone says, what do you do at Halloween? What do you do at Halloween? And we take our kids trick-or-treating. So we thought, you know what? I think our Halloween parties would kick ass because we throw a hell of a party mm -hmm. here. So six months, half, halfway mark, it's better than another convention because it's one night for us and not a whole weekend. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we're going to make it all local, local bands and a burlesque show. And there's going to be some local vendors there and a costume contest, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yes. It's just, it's just going to be a big one night blowout. And another so. place for our Miss Nightmare to make an appearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. She was beautiful. Yes. We crowned a new one last great, night. Yeah, good job yep. for yep. that, too. That Thank great. you for le letting me do that. Yes, that was a lot of fun last awesome. night. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should, we'll get her on the show, and we'll, and we'll come out to the uh, Halloween thing. Let's talk about date, let's talk about location, and let's talk about money to get it. Very easy. Uh, the date is uh, Friday, October 25th. 25th. It's going to be here at the Novi Sheridan mm -hmm. in the same ballroom that the showroom's yep. in right now. Yep. Uh, and I don't know if we settle on the price yet, but it's going to be like, you know, like 20, 25 bucks. Your stuff yeah, is it's going to be like, yeah, I mean, the, you know, for, yeah. for the thing. And of course, there'll be like a, a VIP pass that could, you get, you know, yeah. the swag bag and stuff for a little whatever extra. Yeah. And, and there'll, we'll be, some, there'll be a out. huge costume contest with cash prizes. Costume, maybe tattoo yeah. again, and then yeah. live music. And, and there's been a few of the folks who um, here guests, and I won't 
say it yet, but they were like, I would love to come back and yeah. do, just come out and hang out at the just show. Just come out and hang oh, out for the, the show. for the Halloween show, so. Yeah. Very cool. Party. I keep calling it a show. It's the Halloween party. Yeah. Okay, uh, two, two things, then I'll let you guys go, because I, I know Thanks, it's uh, busy and you got to wrap some stuff up. Let me know about uh, Thursdays. Let the folks know about uh, the great Thursdays that you and I became friends so many years ago. <laughs> you from go that. with that Fright one. Night <laughs> Double Features every Thursday night at 8 o'clock at the Imagine Theater. He says it like Canada. a bitch. <laughs> it's like, it's just fun. It's beach ball, dodgeball, laser pointers, inappropriate commentary. Yep. Of course. Hey, the truth bad is. Bad joke, <laughs> but it's just a lot of fun. It's 10 bucks and, it, and, and sometimes there's third movie, which over, over the, the years, summer, yep. there's typically third movie. Third movie, movie because <laughs> of the summer. Hey, it's kind of become a family too, has it? It's it a has. great oh, setting yes. and uh, families come and it's, it's a lot and of fun. It's, and a lot of the, yeah, it's just, and a lot of the folks that are Fright Nights are here at Motor City Nightmare. Yeah. Said, so, and some people, they go bowling and do something every week. And there's also, Our yeah, people are Fright, that's what they there's do. There's the outside yeah. excursions with the Fright Night family. Right. So, yeah. The, yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm proud to Fright be part Night, of that. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Fright Night Road Trip. A lot of stuff. So if you're in the Michigan viewing area watching Cult Pop, by all means, you, you want to become a part of this. Answers. It's a lot of fun. And it's only $10. Two or three great movies. It's and a, it's if you order time. pizza at the theater, they'll bring they'll it bring it to us. So it's just because they fun. love to yeah. watch the Fright Night people. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't let you tell folks about the website where they can get all information about next year's convention, the Halloween, and Thursdays. So okay, MotorCityNightmares.com is the website. Everything will be updated on there relatively weekly or every other day or and so. And the Facebook page. Yeah, usually you've got a Facebook presence. Like you do have a Facebook yeah. presence. So yeah. uh, Motor City Nightmares. Yeah, go see all the pictures. All the pictures from the show are. So you'll be everyone's posting. And I'm up there yeah, too, which yep. is great. It's yeah. cool. Well, guys, I want to thank you and I want to wish you continued success. Great job this year. And, uh, you know, we're always going to be there to support you. And great, just uh, great job this year. And I wish you guys continued success. Thank you, Jim thank Hall. You so much. Jim thank Hall. You Jim Hall. Jim Hall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, stay tuned for more Cult Pop. With me now is Marcel Marcolina with the Motor City Haunt Club. Marcel's been on the show before uh, multiple times. We love having him on. And uh, we wanted to talk about the Haunt Club and uh, a lot of cool things coming up here in the uh, future. You've got the garage sale, the haunted garage sale. We'll talk about the club and, and just different stuff coming up. Sure. Well, as you know, Jim, uh, the Motor City Haunt Club is an organization that uh, basically is, has a people that love Halloween join this club. So uh, whenever you want to learn how to make a tombstone or a scary prop or a skeleton uh, for your display, then you come join the club and we have uh, make and takes and demos uh, every month throughout the year. And we just get together and have fun. And the best thing that I like about this club is just the camaraderie and the amount of talent that mm -hmm. is available with this club. Uh, different levels of experience in the haunt industry, be it uh, at a pro level, amateur level, or just a small home haunt on the corner in your street. Mm -hmm. And um, and these folks are a real, a real joy to be around. Let's talk a little bit about the make and take because people who want to make and take, you do some really cool stuff here at the convention. You've got a whole table with stuff, uh, zombie crossing signs, you make uh, uh, drums that look like, you know, toxic waste sure. bubbling out and stuff like that. And these are all little Event, uh, making blood, tombstones, things like that. So each month, talk a little bit about the fact that you'll have a meeting and in that meeting, you create and design something. And at the end of that meeting, you should have something that you can take home and have as a prop outside your house. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about that. Yep, so at the beginning of the year, we usually uh, get together and determine uh, the events that we want to, that the, the, we want the club to do throughout the year. Um, be it, you know, make and take or demo or a field trip or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, whoever is interested in, let's say, making one of those uh, zombie, the rusty zombie signs, uh, if you're interested, then uh, you just come to that meeting. And usually you only have to pay for uh, supplies, the, the materials, obviously, because you are the labor and you'll be working on your own project. And then at the end of the day, uh, and usually each make and take is about, you know, two or three hours or so. And at the end of the day, you'll have a nice uh, prop or in this case, you know, a nice uh, zombie sign that you can show and scare your neighbors with. Yeah, very cool. Cool stuff on display here. And it, it is really neat that if you've got any type of uh, uh, th thought that you might have some artistic ability that you want to have a, a way to get it out. What, right. what, a, what a great club to join and, and you can well, really make some neat stuff. And that's really the, the reason that I joined as well because really I love Halloween but I don't really think I have the artistic ability that a lot of other folks have and when you get all these ideas together in one room 
um, from all different types of backgrounds and sources and different levels of experience, be a pro or amateur level, then that really enriches everybody at the same time. And then that helps you be a better haunter, I guess. So obviously I also work at uh, a home haunt called Scary Scott's Haunted House. And Scott and I, since we've joined, we've really uh, increased our skills and we've been able to uh, scare the general public a lot better. Yeah, uh, we featured that haunt a couple years ago. That was a lot of fun. People can uh, still take a look at that episode. It's, it, that was a pretty impressive haunt for a, for a home haunt. That was pretty darn impressive. Yeah, it is basically a, a pro level haunt, but it's inside a garage. So it's all self-contained, and uh, but it's, it's basically a professional style haunt. So we encourage it. And that's pretty neat for the neighborhood. People come from all over that they can come make that part of their weekend, stop in there, get scared a little bit, go about their business. And that's another thing the club actually does is we do uh, haunt crawls throughout the year, pro and amateur haunt crawls and the, the Scary Scott's Haunted House has been featured on one of the amateur mm -hmm. haunt crawls that people get to visit throughout the year. Okay, before we get to all the info of website and all that kind of stuff, I wanted to talk about a, another event that you guys are uh, push every year. It's a lot of fun and that's the Haunted Garage Sale. Talk a little that's bit right. about, about that. Yep. So every year we've been holding a, a Haunted Garage Sale. So it's basically, we call it that because it's a regular garage sale, but obviously featuring uh, items of uh, Halloween or horror nature. And uh, we started out uh, at the University of Detroit Mercy, uh, mm -hmm. where we usually have our monthly meetings. Um, but it's gotten so big that at this point, we have actually uh, had to rent out space at an outside location. Okay. So this year's event, which will be uh, the first Saturday of September, um, Saturday, September 7th, will be in Mount Clemens. It's actually in downtown Mount Clemens. Mm -hmm. I actually gave you a flyer there with mm -hmm. the address. Um, but it's going to be 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and um, the main focus of the garage sale is um, to focus on things that our club has built during mm -hmm. the year and offer to sell uh, to the general public. Uh, and we've, we've been fortunate that we've gotten some pretty good media exposure the last couple of years, which has grown the garage sale in size to the point that now we have to have it off-site. Yeah, and I, I will say I've gone there uh, a couple of years. You've got to get there early because a lot of the good stuff is boom within an hour people so you, you get such a large crowd early a lot of stuff goes so definitely go there definitely get there early but uh let's tell folks the website and uh, let's remind them of the date and uh, okay let let them know how they can join and are there any is there dues to join the club there is actually thanks jim um yeah the website is www.motorcityhauntclub.com um the dues are basically just ten dollars a year um, and then once you join, uh, you do have to attend one meeting to be an official member of the club. And then once you attend that meeting, you get a membership card that will allow you to attend future meetings and to attend the haunt crawls that we go on throughout the year. Because we also get uh, discounts from professional haunted houses throughout the, uh, throughout the area with our membership card. Um, and then yes, the garage sale will be uh, Saturday, September 7th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, in Mount Clemens, Michigan. Okay, and one more time with the website so folks at home that are interested want to join or want more information. Yep, for more information on the club or to find out uh, our meeting schedule or what we're doing at the next meeting, it's www.motorcityhauntclub.com. Okay, excellent. Marcel, thanks as always for being on. I wish you continued thanks success. Me, thanks. Appreciate it. Stay tuned for more Cult Pop. With me now is artist extraordinaire Don England. Don, thanks so much for being a re return guest to Cult Pop. Thanks uh, for having me again. Had you on a year ago, just love your stuff and wanted to have you on again. Uh, you're here at Motor City Nightmares, you do a lot of conventions. Uh, first, why don't you tell me how your experience has been so far at this uh, convention? Oh, it's been great. Um, just like last year, I'm having a great time, meeting a lot of new people, uh, getting my artwork out there, which is the main goal, reason I'm here. So, it's been a good show. Uh, Don, you've got some really cool stuff. I had you on before because I, I really love your work. But you don't just have prints and paintings, things like that. You've got so much cool stuff. You know how to market yourself. You've got shirts, aprons, hats. Talk about some of the cool different items you have with, with uh, all your different kind of logos and, and features and specialty items. Talk a little bit about it. Um, every year I like to come out with something new. Like this year I have switch plate covers with some of my artwork on it. Um, 
might be doing license plates soon, uh, have the aprons that you'd mentioned, uh, just something else besides a t-shirt or a print and you know that's gonna be the main thing they buy but you got that specialty stuff that people come by and like to see and uh, you know just something for everybody. Uh, we've talked, I, I bought a shirt from you yesterday and some other stuff and we talked about uh, as people see your images and stuff one of your best-selling items is one of your least favorite pieces of art. Talk a little bit about, you You know what I'm referring to there. The Marvin the Martian vs. Alien. It's it's okay. It's not my favorite piece just because it was kind of a quick thing and I just kind of did it at, you know, my wife was like, oh, you know, it was a sketch. She's like, oh, go ahead and finish it. And I did. And it's my best-selling piece for the last four or five years. But uh, I just, I know I could do better, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's why I'm disappointed with it. But people seem to enjoy it. Yeah, I just love that piece. I got the shirt. I, I like giving it as gifts, and I just think it's a really neat shirt. But uh, I, I wanted to talk about a particular piece that you uh, featured on Facebook, and we'll tell uh, people about your website and stuff in a, a bit. But uh, you did that really neat multiple character uh, that, oh, that, that I got the print yeah. of. Yeah, the collage. Talk a little bit about that piece and what inspired you with that. Um, actually, that goes back to when I was in my late teens and 20s, early 20s. I used to do a lot of collages on big poster boards, you know, mm -hmm. whatever I could find. And I would just start in one corner and work my way over. And uh, I hadn't done one in years, probably about 15 years. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get a big board and just start hacking away at it. And uh, it was probably about five years ago, six years ago. And uh, I just grabbed uh, as many pieces of 70s and 80s characters that I could or things from movies. And uh, I tried to stay away from a lot of the... They want to put Jason prominently out there or mm. Freddy. So I have them on there, but they're kind of hidden. Um, and I just wanted to get a little of my favorites out there. And uh, it's the piece that kind of got my name out there. When I first premiered it at Cinema Wasteland uh, five, six years ago, that's the piece that everybody kind of came over like, oh, did you see that piece over there? And uh, on the other note, I just sold it last year, the original. And I've never been upset about selling a piece of original artwork. Um, because I'd like people to hang mm -hmm. my artwork up, especially an original. And the guy bought it, and after he bought it, I was actually kind of depressed. <laughs> I'm like, you know, that, that's kind of a wish I would have kept it a little bit. Yeah, you know? that was my but, baby. Uh, I love yeah. it. Sure. <laughs> but uh, I actually have another one planned uh, since it's been been a while. I'm going to pick some other characters and throw like a another one together here soon. Very cool. And, and as when people have seen that on, on our images as we show them, I'm sure you're going to get more print sales from it because it's just an amazing piece. I, I really you. love that. Now let's talk a little bit about sales and your website. That if people aren't able to meet you at, a, at the convention and, and either get an original or, or buy a print, you've got a great website with just everything from t-shirts, aprons, you know, everything you sell. Talk, talk about your website and some of your pieces and, and kind of price points for stuff. Um, my web, website, I, I try to update it as much as I can. I do it all myself, and I'm not a, a web guy so much. Um, but uh, I try to get on there as much as I can, and I have a store on there. It goes through Etsy, and uh, I have my shirts, prints, uh, everything up there. The prints are like they are at the show, uh, 10 and $15 usually. The shirts are 12 or 15 uh, I try to keep everything reasonably priced, you know, with the economy, and just, you know, that way people can buy the stuff, you know, instead of having to worry about spending a lot of money on something. Um, and I have some... Uh, Every once in a while, I don't do much sculpture, but I do uh, model kit painting for people, uh, different things like that, and uh, just anything that I can kind of get my hands on and try to post it on there. I uh, want you to be able to say this because a, a lot of people get kind of nervous about artists or, well, I don't know if it, you're very into commission pieces. You're more than willing to take uh, somebody's commission. So talk a little bit about, uh, say, your website and how they could reach you if they're interested in a very specific theme character or something like that, you do a lot of that kind of work. Yes. Uh, my website is donaldengland.com. I'm on Facebook. Um, as far as commissions, I love doing commissions. Uh, it gives, I draw what I want for the most part throughout the, the course of the year, but the commissions is when I really can, you know, pull out, like I just did a Big Bird of all things recently. <laughs> Guy named his son uh, Henson, and he wanted a collage with uh, different Jim Henson characters because that's who he was named after. So I was drawing Big Bird and uh, people from the Dark Crystal and everything. So it gives me an opportunity to extend out to other things I wouldn't usually do. So, uh, Don, we've talked in the uh, past about uh, kind of in a funny way that one of your best-selling pieces is not your all-time favorite piece. Tell me two, three, four pieces that you really think, wow, I knocked it out of the park or I really like this, I like how, how this came out. Uh, the one we were talking about earlier, the Horror Collage, is obviously mm -hmm. one of my mm -hmm. favorites. But uh, over the winter this year, I did a Videodrome, David Cronenberg, one of his earlier films. And uh, 
it's my, probably my favorite piece I've done. And I brought it to the first show this year. I brought it to a couple now. And I even put it on a shirt because I was so excited about this. And most people are coming up and, what is that? They, they don't know what it is. Few people are catching it, but uh, it, it's not selling, which is kind of funny because it's one of my favorite pieces. And that's usually, I've noticed what happens when something I really enjoy, uh, it doesn't seem to strike other people. I did do a Tales from the Crypt from the 70s movie. Mm -hmm. and I did it as a comic book page, like the old EC comics. And uh, that one, I'm really happy with that and how that came out. And uh, that seems to be moving really well, so. In regards to commission pieces, uh, do you have a low end, you know, 50 to 100 you start at, or, or just about anything? Uh, you know, it all just depends on what you're wanting. If you just wanted a character's head or something, and it was just a pencil sketch, you know, like a convention sketch, mm -hmm. it'd be like $25 I usually start out at. Uh, as you add more characters, it goes up in price a little bit. If you want it pen and ink, like if you wanted an actual finished nice piece you'd want to hang up, it would probably start out at about $75 for a, a nice finished piece uh, with one or two characters maybe. Well, I, I really dig your work and I highly encourage people to, uh, to check you out and check your website out. Um, I wanted to know, I, I've been asking most of the guests uh, on the show today, kind of to talk a little bit about your feelings about the convention and more so the interacting with people and, and how a lot of artists may not have that opportunity too much. You might have an opening, you might have this or that, but when people can come and specifically track you down because they've seen you in the past, bought a shirt, like your work, it's kind of neat, I would think, having that fan interaction and, and people being here specifically because th you're part of their experience that they want to have this weekend. I enjoy talking to the people. I'm more on the shyer side where I don't usually uh, talk to that many people, but at the conventions for some reason I can open up and I like being behind the table because you get, like you said, so many people coming by and uh, people know who I am now at this point and uh, it's, I get some good conversations. I make a lot of friends from doing this. Uh, enjoy it a lot. Uh, and there's such a variety of people at these things nowadays. And you do what, about 15 to 20 of these a year, you said? Um, minimum 10, but usually upwards towards 15 a year, usually. In between uh, Illinois, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and of course, Michigan. And, and this one's amazing. I know this has got to be one of the best. What's uh, some of your other favorite uh, shows? Um, Cinema Wasteland's a great show. It's more of a grindhouse, 70s style show. He gears his guests towards that. Um, it's a fun show. Uh, Horror Hound's another good show, pretty on a bigger scale. Um, and then there's Flashback in Chicago, which is a really fun show also. Those are some of my favorites. A uh, couple more things I wanted to ask you. The first one, you, you kind of might have an answer already. What is a couple of the more unique or odd requests you've ever had for drawing? Big Bird, for you, sounds awfully odd, but... Uh, Big Bird was other? one. Um, I had one, uh, there was a band called Nun Slaughter of all things, mm -hmm. and I did a piece for them, and not something I would usually do, but it had to do with some nuns. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, uh, Big Bird is definitely probably the strangest one I got, just because, I mean, it's... You think somebody's yanking your chain, and well, they say, I want a Big Bird piece. Sure, exactly. sure. Right? That's, that's kind of funny. And then, uh, for people, you, you've got a very cool style, kind of unique, but uh, tell me some of your uh, influences, some of your favorite artists that, that you kind of uh, loved I have growing up. Many favorite artists. Obviously, Bernie Wrightson, who we talked about last time, uh, Richard Corbin, uh, Frank Frazetta. Um, just, I mean, I could name a whole lot. I mean, Todd McFarlane, I grew up, you know, reading his Spider Man comics, Spawn. Um, but uh, I don't follow the comics too much today, so I don't know a lot of the newer artists. And those are my most influential ones, are the comic book artists, but definitely the ones from the 70s, old Eeries and Creepy, uh, okay. Vince Locke from Dead World. Oh, yeah, a big fan of his. Well, Don, uh, love your work. Uh, I want to encourage people to kind of check out the website again, donengland.com. You also have a presence on Facebook. You don't do Twitter, though, do you? I don't yeah. do Twitter. Yeah. Um, some friends of mine are trying to talk me into it, so it might right. happen sooner or later. Maybe there, but they can track you down on. Uh, uh, the website, Facebook, and of course, we'll, we'll link up as always. Uh, link up your stuff. I want to wish you continued success. I want to thank you for being on the show today, Don. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Okay, excellent. That was Don England. You should really uh, check out his website, purchase some of his art, cool shirts, hats, everything. And uh, please stay tuned for more Cult Pop. That wraps up another episode of Cult Pop, 
And uh, some folks wanted me to mention some things uh, before we wrap up the show. Todd and Tommy wanted me to mention that they've got a wonderful event coming up in October, and that's their Halloween Bash. Uh, a lot of the fun that you have at their convention, but uh, a lot more music, a lot of fun things going on, movies and all that, and a great costume party. So we want you to check that out. All that information is available at the website for pricing, hotel information, all that type of stuff. If you've been to the convention, it's at the exact same lo location, so you won't have any trouble finding it. And it sounds like a lot of fun, and we're, Jerry and I are going to make it out there, so we hope you do too. Uh, some other information. The Motor City Haunts Club has their annual garage sale coming up. And as you see this, you'll be able to get the information and maybe attend this year for 2013. But they've got interesting stuff going on all year round. So make sure you visit their website. And if you're interested, maybe join because they've got a lot of cool stuff going on there. And then Don England wanted me to pass on the fact that he's updating his website. There's already a lot of great stuff going on at the current site, but he is updating his website. So you know, check in there every few weeks and, and see what you see. And, and uh, there's all kinds of great art, all kinds of great things to buy. So we hope you check that out. Speaking of websites, Cult Pop, of course, if you're watching this locally, do you know about the website? Cultpop.com. Every episode we've ever shot is on and uh, information about every guest. And we're really proud of it. So please take a look at www.cultpop.com. We also have a Facebook site. And if uh, you like Facebook, please go on there and, and give us a like. And every few weeks or every couple weeks, we post about the show, uh, post about maybe some guests that have been on in the past and, and try to keep you up to date and anything that's going on with future news of the show. So we try to keep uh, semi-updated on there. And so if, if you want to like us, that'd be great and we'll keep you up to date. Otherwise, I thank you so much for watching. We appreciate all the notes. We appreciate the hits on Facebook. We appreciate the hits on the website. Thanks for watching. And keep in mind, there will be one more episode from Motor City Nightmares. And of course, a lot of great other episodes coming on Cult Pop. So stay tuned. <laughs>